So the next video in the sequence is going to move away from um, creating a model that directly interfaces with the layers we have here. I'm still going to reference them for sort of ease, but actually builds what's called a parametized model, which is something I could take, I could save, and then I could email the toolbox to somebody. They could open it up on their computer, and they would be able to run it with data they have, and the output would always be the same, depending on whatever they input. So um, what I'll do here for this one is, is relatively simple. I'm going to make a tool that would allow the user to input a polygon uh, to dissolve by a certain value, right? to dissolve similar values together, and then to perform a spatial join uh, based on the new polygons um, that were created in that dissolve. So whenever you're building a model from scratch, you can really do it in sort of two ways. Some people, it's, it's much easier for them to say like, okay, I, I know that I want uh, a polygon or a feature class to start. And so maybe what they'll do is they'll drag in a feature class similar to what they want, which right now references neighborhoods, but doesn't have to, right? You could delete that and you could theoretically rename it right click and go to rename and say you know input feature class and the cool thing that you've done here if you then right click and do parameter and save your model if you click on this model now actually the opportunity to input something pops up and it's gray because it doesn't have anything yet. It entirely depends on what a user chooses to input. So, but that same concept that I got by dragging in and then renaming, if that's the way you want to do it, by all means do. But you can also right click and just add a variable. What's a variable? Anything is a variable. And we will learn over the course of the next three weeks many of these will start to use, right? Cool ones that we've maybe never heard before, like feature set, which is a neat one that allows you to sort of draw a layer on the fly and be able to use it. Maybe your input might just be a string value. You want your user to give you a value and then you use that value to run sort of the expression. But in this instance, I would pick feature layer, meaning it can be something that my user drags directly in from the layers or something they bring in from their files. It'll come in looking like feature layer, but as I mentioned before, if you right click and go to rename, you could simply call it input feature layer, or you could put the word cheese or the word dog. It wouldn't matter. Whatever you put is what's going to show up when you double click the model, as long as you right click and say parameter, meaning a user needs to choose what this is. So. Let's drag in tools, and I'll pick Dissolve first. There's Dissolve. I've dragged it in. Cool. Now that I've dragged in Dissolve, I will do my connections. I'll say, hey, you're going to connect to Dissolve here. Now. If I do nothing, this tool would simply dissolve everything into one. But I actually want my user to have the ability to choose what they dissolve, right? What's the field that matters to them? Because they may have sort of, uh, you know, very different data than I am that maybe classifies their polygons by one thing or mine are classified by another. So perhaps I actually want to right click the tool itself and to create a parameter. And we won't do statistics for now, we'll just do dissolve. But now suddenly I'm removing the dissolve field and I'm right clicking and making that a parameter. And now if my user were to run this tool, they would have the ability to put neighborhoods and then dissolve field would change by whatever those fields are. And this would totally depend on whatever data they input. Excellent. So I've created a dissolve. Uh, I'm not going to need the dissolve, right? Because I'm eventually going to spatially join. So we can use that trick we learned about memory 
which is super critical when you're building a tool for someone else. Because a tool for other people is often going to require a lot of these intermediate steps. But if I just let this save automatically, you know, if I were to drag in dissolve and I use one of my layers here, it might still remember that it's saving this on my scratch drive or on my computer. So it's much easier to really double click and say, hey, memory. So memory is the same everywhere. It'll just be your memory file versus mine. You know, memory, uh, we'll say it, you know, this for dissolve. So I got my feature layer, I got my dissolve fields, then I'll have my spatial join. Now spatial joins are gonna require two things, right? It's definitely gonna take this as an input, right? This is really that target feature because whatever the dissolve is, either I'm gonna dissolve by the neighborhood name, or I'm gonna dissolve by the color, I'm gonna dissolve by some random field, but whatever it is, that's gonna be sort of the input. And then it needs something to join to. I could drag in crimes and, and do that process where I delete the crime name and, and rename it. Or we could continue to practice that ability to bring in variables. We know this is gonna be another feature layer. Maybe give it a rename so that you don't confuse it with the other. Rename it as join layer. And give it the old connection. For now, we're not going to give our, ability, our user the ability to uh, choose the join fields. But if we were being real, you know, we would probably. In fact, I feel let's just do it. Um, create a variable, the um, field map, you know, you should probably would give them the ability to choose the type of join and, and the spatial operation. We'll keep it simple here. Field map and make that a parameter so that they can choose. And then the last thing you'd want is, is your output. I mean, ultimately, where is this going to go? And you would make that a parameter so that your user is able to choose. And I'll save it and right click on this and say add to display, save it again. And now I've built something that I could give to any one of you. You would double click on it and it would have nothing. It's gonna default here to whatever your feature class is. That's the only sort of opening. It'll show your computer when you get it. But now you can walk through. You can drag something directly from here. You could come on in and say, hey, I want this to be neighborhoods. I want you to dissolve by the color, you know, red, green, blue. Uh, what do I want to do here? Oh, notice I forgot to make the join layer a parameter. I'm glad I actually did that because it's going to allow me to do one other thing. So I made the join layer a parameter. And notice because I made it the parameter, the fourth, I was like the fourth thing I clicked on. It's hanging out down there, and that's sort of weird, right? I don't want that down there. That's, that doesn't follow the logic of this tool. Well, the cool thing is you can actually change the way parameters look by coming up to the properties of a model and going to parameters. You could drag join layer and put it up here, right? I could grab it, hold it, drag it above output, so then it becomes the third. This is where you can also change the names, right? Dissolve fields, output layer. I could name that cheese if I wanted. This determines what it requires as an input. This also is where I could say, hey, you don't need this. This is sort of an optional one. Input, input, input versus output. We're going to come back to this in a future tool where you'll see there's a third option called derived, right? Derived is an interesting one that we might use um, if the, like, sort of the, the variable is going to be derived from another field. We can also do filter. Now, these ones are done automatically, but when you start creating your own, you could make the filter being a field, right? The fact that dissolve field is a filter field, that's how it knows to look at sort of the field values that are in that input. But you could create your own thing, right? I'm not going to do it, but you could double click here, come in and say uh, list, and you could create your own value list of inputs that you would be able to show as a user and, and ultimately utilize. 
So nice way of sort of organizing the way things look. And then once I organize them, now it's in a more logical orientation. Now I can sort of run the model all the way through. All right, there we go. Beautiful. I want you to be, I probably should have put it above the, um, above the field map, but, you know, laziness there. So we'll come on in and do color. The join layers were going to be all prime. The field map would show up here. And I could come down and do that thing I wanted to show you again. Maybe pick, you know, the hour of the day and just make that uh, a mode. All right, I could delete other fields I don't need. You know, I don't need DC key or any of this. This noise here that's just effectively going to, um, you know, make it seem like I have more data than I need. You know, just delete, delete, delete. Keep it nice and simple. Just focusing on the hour. And then what do I want to save it as? Well, I'll navigate to wherever I'm saving stuff and maybe call it final output. Save it. Run. And there it goes. It's going to run through each of the things. It's working just like a regular tool. You have the messages here. Bing, boom, 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 boom. And there you go. The model has been completed. I've got something here up. Oh. That's not good. Well, good thing it sort of came at the right moment right there where you saw the tool sort of output. So I'm going to pause this video here before the thing shuts down. Uh, maybe I'll sort of merge a section at the end that you can see sort of the output, but that's how this Sorry about that crash. Uh, so here's the output that was created here, um, just like the tool said it would be, called Final Output, saved where I wanted it to be, right? Dissolved by the color, which is what we chose as our input, summarizing the hour. And ultimately, summarizing here the join count, the number of crimes that it found in each of the colors. And even more importantly, this sort of intermediate dissolve layer is nowhere to be found, right? It deleted from my map when I restarted. It's not in my uh, uh, Dropbox here, or sorry, my geodatabase, because it was in the memory workspace. So those are the basics of how you run a parametized, customized model.